Hello, and welcome once again to Hardly Tech. Today we're going to be taking a look at ray tracing performance on the MSI Ventus 3X RTX 3060 Ti. Blah. Say that five times fast. All games today are tested with ray tracing on max settings. Frame rate limit off. You're probably tired of seeing this by now, but here are the system specs. And for today's ray tracing games, we'll be playing Dirt 5, Doom Eternal, Metro Exodus, Resident Evil Village, Cyberpunk 2077, and Minecraft RTX. Hey man, does this Ford come with NOS? Ah, whatever. It's time for Dirt 5. Here in Dirt 5's built-in benchmark, we see that 1080p were running around 75 to 90 frames per second. At 1440p, we're maintaining just above 60 FPS for the whole test. And at 4K, we're getting about half the frame rate we see at 1080p, right around 35 to 45 frames per second. Now at 1080p and 1440p, this is very acceptable. The settings are maxed out and we're getting playable frame rates across the board. No major stutters or frame rate hitches, no frame time issues. 4K, however, like seen in rasterized performance, is a little bit too much for this card. If you're looking at this card for 4K gaming, I would say drop settings from ultra high to high and you'll hit that 60 FPS target, no problem. Here in Doom Eternal, we have all the settings maxed out except for texture pool size, which is set to ultra because this card only has 8 gigabytes of memory. At 
At 1080p, we see frame rates ranging from about 120 frames per second up to about 200 frames per second, generally hovering between 150 and 170 frames per second. At 1440p, we're seeing frame rates around 100 to 160 frames per second, usually hovering between 120 to 130 frames per second. At 4K, we're once again hitting the frame buffer limit. Frame rates are generally between 40 and 60 frames per second. In less demanding scenes, closer to 60. However, dropping settings from Ultra Nightmare down to Nightmare would solve this problem and free up the frame buffer. Better take an extra filter. We're heading into the tunnels in Metro Exodus. In Metro Exodus, we once again have settings maxed out, including Hairworks on, Advanced Physics, and Tessellation on. At 1080p, we get very playable frame rates, roughly 75 to 85 frames per second, which, if you're playing at 60 frames per second, gives you a little room to breathe. 1440p is a little bit more demanding. We see frame rates ranging from about 55 to 65 frames per second. Still very playable. At 4K, however, we once again see the frame rate tank down to about 30 to 35 frames per second. Turning DLSS on helps with this. Putting it on quality gets our frame rate right up to about 50 to 55 frames per second. If you don't mind the very minor change in image quality, then this is a great way to get a little bit of that performance back. Dropping DLSS from quality to balanced, however, doesn't benefit quite as much. Frame rates do jump above 60 FPS once in a while, but not enough to really justify the loss in image quality, in my opinion. At 1440p, however, turning DLSS on to quality brings our frame rates very close to 1080p performance with DLSS off. Got something that might interest you. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's Resident Evil Village. Settings in Resident Evil Village are once again maxed out, including texture quality, which is set to 8 gigabytes. Even having texture quality set to 8 gigabytes, we don't see any frame buffer limitation issues, and so we don't have any massive stuttering or frame time problems. Running through the main village at 1080p, we see frame rates hovering between 80 and 90 frames per second, which is pretty good. Frame rates at 1440p hover between 70 and 80 FPS, and at 4K between 40 and 50 frames per second. Inside Castle Dimitrescu, 1080p frame rates are between 100 and 120 frames per second, so if you're running a high frame rate monitor, I think you'll be pretty happy with performance. 1440p frame rates are between 85 and 95 FPS, and 4K sits between 55 and 65 frames per second. Not quite hitting a constant 60, but very close. During combat, lighting and particle effects with ray tracing on cause frame rates to drop about 15 to 20 percent. My blood is pumping! Mm, beep mm, boop, it's time for Cyberpunk 2077! To be honest, I didn't get much time with Cyberpunk because I had just purchased it, but I wanted to include it since it's considered one of the most demanding ray tracing titles available. I figured if any game can push this card to its knees, it'd be this one. All main settings are maxed out, except for ray trace lighting, which is set to ultra. Going any higher is just way too much for this card. 
and DLSS set to balanced was needed to get any kind of playable frame rate. At 1080p, we're actually hitting above 60 FPS, ranging from about 70 to 75 frames per second for the most part. At 1440p, we're seeing frame rates hover between 50 and 55 FPS for most of this test. At 4K, we're once again maxing out the frame buffer and hovering between 20 to 28 frames per second. I would definitely recommend turning settings down at 4K if you want to play with this card. Alright, now with the main games out of the way, we'll discuss the results with Minecraft RTX up on screen, and we're going to test a few different settings. We'll be toying with the ray tracing render distance between 12 and 24 chunks to see what performance impact there is, and we'll be trying upscaling on versus off. Minecraft Bedrock Edition is by default set to your desktop resolution setting, and here that's 4K, which once again has us bouncing off of the frame buffer limit. Turning on upscaling brings our frame rate up above 30 frames per second for the most part, and reducing the ray trace render distance from 24 chunks to 12 chunks gives us a few more FPS, bringing us closer to 40 frames per second, which is way more enjoyable in my opinion. So with this 3060 Ti, we seem to be hitting a power limit and a frame buffer limit. 8GB just isn't quite enough to give us good 4K gaming, whether it be rasterized or ray traced. However, if you turn some settings down, you can get some pretty solid gameplay at 4K, if you don't mind medium or high settings. 1440p and 1080p seem to be where it's at for this card, though. If you're rocking a 1080p or 1440p display and you have variable refresh rate, I think this is a great option, whether you play with DLSS on or off. I think the big problem here is availability and, of course, the price with the way GPU sales are right now. If you can get one near MSRP, I still definitely recommend a 3060 Ti for most people. Of course, a 3070 or a 3080 would definitely give you more performance, but they're very hard to come by and the prices are way inflated. In my next video, I'm going to compare this 3060 Ti once again to the 2080 Super. I want to see how far the RTX cores have come. Of course, they're more efficient, but how much more efficient? With how much of a lead the 2080 Super had over the 3060 Ti in the previous videos, I'm not so sure it's a good buy compared to the last gen. So, keep your eyes peeled for the next video. If there's a test you would like to see or a specific game, let me know in the comments. I'm always looking for suggestions to improve the quality of the channel, so please, let me know what you'd like to see. I'm also considering starting a new segment where I do testing, but for a single game. That way, if you're looking for performance in a specific game with a specific set of hardware, you don't have to necessarily watch a long video just to see one segment. With all of that out of the way, Thank you everybody for watching, I appreciate it. If you enjoyed the content and found it useful, subscribe all over that button. I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.